Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com for free sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's split from the boxing community here right now on this video. Right, this video is not for the boxing community. This video is really for the gambling community. Right, the gambling crowd's a little bit different than the boxing community. Right, the gambling crowd, the difference is that the gambling crowd's looking for value, not winners. It's a little bit different. Gamblers see life differently. For us, it's all a gamble, right? Nothing is certain. Everything is based on the odds, right? I strongly believe that Eris Landy Lara beats Saul Alvarez. But if I were to walk into a casino, and if I were to see that the casino were offering 8 to 1 odds on Alvarez to win the fight, I'd have to take them. Whoever I think is going to win the fight, the value is just too great. I realize that life has uncertainty. There's risk involved in everything. If you're going to more than compensate me for the risk, and I'm going to have to jump in the water and take it. Now there's a scene right now that's simply preposterous, in my opinion, happening right now at your local casino. Now keep in mind, Janady Golovkin is unbeaten. Understand, I myself made a video, I believe a couple years ago, where I talked about how I thought Tyson Fury and Janady Golovkin were the next big things in boxing. By the way, I still believe that they are, you know, uh, great fighters, right? But Daniel Gill is a guy who went the distance with Anthony Mundine twice. I understand it's fashionable these days to criticize Mundine. I consider Mundine to be a very difficult matchup for anyone. Understand, guys like Roman Carmison were in against Gil. Carmison's pretty offensive, or was in his day. He could not get to Daniel Gil. Gil ultimately stopped him late in that fight. Darren Barker, no slouch in the ring. He fought Gil. According to the judges, he took Gill's title. I debate that. But what can't be debated is Gill went the distance with him. In fact, Gill scored the only knockdown of that fight. Understand, Daniel Gill has been in the ring with very high quality guys and has gone the distance. Right? This is an elite fighter who used to wear the belt for the middleweight title. Now, look, I like Janady Golovkin as much as the next guy. But right now, casinos are giving you 8 to 1 on Daniel Gill. Let me repeat that. 8 to 1 on Daniel Gill. That's absurd. At a certain point, when you know a guy is world class and the odds get to be that ridiculous, you've got to take them, right? So the play I'm recommending, and it's an odds play because gamblers understand. Sometimes you're just hedging the risk mathematically, right? The bet I'm recommending is to take Daniel Gill at 8 to 1, right? Hedged with the over in the fight, right? Simply put, 
given how preposterous these odds are, and by the way, casinos literally are offering Golovkin to win the fight at 1 to 14. What they're telling you is that if these two fought 15 times, Golovkin would win 14 of the 15. Right? The spread between the, the 1 to 14 on Golovkin to win and the 8 to 1 on Gil to win is where the casino makes its profit. I'm here to tell you that I believe that the crowd is way off here. They're underestimating the power of lateral movement and experience. Daniel Gill is very good defensively. Daniel Gill moves laterally. He's hard to find. He's not a mid-range hooker. He's a hoverer. Right? Golovkin won't be able to just find him, hit him, and drop him. Because finding him is going to be a challenge. By the way, while Golovkin tries to find him, understand there'll be bullets flying back. Look at the Darren Barker Gill footage. Gill drops Barker on a body shot. Understand this is a guy who can come in, dip a shoulder, and throw a punch with leverage. What I want you to do, too, is look at the rematch of Gill and Anthony Mundine. Gill's the high-volume guy in that fight, and he's high-volume all the way through. This is a guy with stamina. He's not going to run out of gas against Golovkin at the end of the third round and then get taken out based on fatigue. Also, look at Gill fights. When have you seen Gill's head popping back after getting hit flush with shots? It doesn't happen. He rolls with punches. He's a lateral mover who's also rolling with punches. You'll notice he has his hands up too. So to me, this is a competitive fight between a current middleweight champion, Golovkin, and a former middleweight champion, Daniel Gill, that should not be priced the way it is priced. Since Golovkin is a knockout puncher, right, because of the Ishida fight, because of the Macklin fight, I think we're forgetting the golovkin Kasima uma fight, right? So I'm guessing the over-under here is going to be something ridiculous, like eight rounds or eight and a half rounds. So I like the over. I think Gill is going to take this fight to the later rounds. Right? And I also like, if a casino is crazy enough to give me 8 to 1 odds on either guy. Right? If Gill were favored and Golovkin were the underdog at 8 to 1, I'd be taking Golovkin. Because again, I'm not looking for a winner. I'm looking for the value. So here, the play I'm recommending is Golovkin at 8 to 1. If I were you, I would get it before the casino wakes up and realizes these odds are preposterous. Hedged against. Right? The over in the fight. I know the highlights are blinding a lot of people. They see Golovkin hitting guys on the chin and guys hitting the deck. No doubt Golovkin is a pretty good fighter. But I'm here to tell you that at the top level, guys have defense. When you see a guy with lateral movement, like Daniel Gill, who has a track record of going several rounds, and who has traveled internationally and fought the house fighter in big fights in places like Germany, and has come through with wins multiple times. In other words, this is a mentally tough guy to go with the technique, the lateral movement, the defense, right? The fact that he's going to force a slugger like Golovkin to cover up at times. Then you'll realize that public perception on this fight, to me, is a bit off. 
I like Gil to win hedge with the over in the fight. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.